In this tutorial, I'm going to use the Northwest Corner method to find the initial basic feasible solution of the transportation problem, and that is uh, three sources F1, F2, and F3, four destinations A, B, C, and uh, D. What you are having there, what is in those uh, small squares there, like the six there, is indicating that the cost of transportation from source F1 to destination A for one single unit is a six. And uh, the 30 there, it's uh, indicating that um, source F1 is a supply capacity of uh, 30. And then at the bottom there, where we have the demand, is indicating that uh, destination A is a demand of um, 35. So now to find uh, this uh, initial basic feasible solution using the Northwest Corner method, we start by looking at uh, the top left hand cell, this one here. And what we do, we check at the supply, and then the demand, and we look at the minimum of uh, those two that I've highlighted in yellow there, the 30 and uh, the 35. The minimum there is a 30. So that means we can um, allocate in that cell, the cell in green, we can allocate 30 units there. So we allocate 30. But the moment we allocate uh, the 30 units there, that means uh, for source F1, we have already exhausted its supply capacity. So we can no longer allocate anything else in the other cells there. So I would have to cross them out indicating that we can no longer allocate anything. Because if we allocate anything in that row, it will exceed the supply for source F1. So we can no longer allocate, so I close them out. And since we can no longer allocate in that row, we now move on to the second row. And for that row, what we would have to look at is this one here. For F2 to A, we look at uh, the supply. It has a supply capacity of 40. And our demand there for destination A is 35. But when you are looking at uh, the demand there, but in this column we have already allocated a 30. So to see how much we can allocate there, we would have to subtract the 30 from uh, the total demand for the destination. So it will be 35 minus 30, which gives us a 5. And then we take the minimum of the 5 and the 40, and we see that the minimum there is a 5. So what you have to do is we have to allocate a 5 here. And when you allocate a 5, the total there for that column where we have the A, it now brings us to 35. So that means we have uh, reached the demand for destination A. And uh, if we have reached that demand, that means we can no longer allocate anything in uh, that uh, column there where we have destination A. So I will cross it out. What we have to do now, we have to move to the next cell, which is now moving to the next column where we have the B there. And uh, we are looking at this one, F2 to B. We look at the supply, the 40, the demand, the 28. But to see how much we can allocate there, when you are looking at the supply side, we are having a 40. But in this row, we have already allocated a 5. So when you are looking at uh, the raw constraints, the supply constraints, what you have to allocate it to be 40 minus the 5, which gives us uh, a 35. Then when you look at the demand, the demand, the maximum that we can allocate is a 28. So we now look at uh, the minimum of the 28 and 35, which gives us uh, a 28 there. So we allocate 28 in that cell. At the moment we allocate 28 in that cell, that means we have uh, reached uh, the demand requirements for destination B. We can no longer allocate anything in that row. We have reached the 28, so I close it out to indicate we can no longer allocate in that column. We now have to move on to the next uh, cell, which is this one, F2 to C. For F2 to C, we are looking at the supply. 40. But when you are looking at the supply, we should uh, not forget that we have already allocated 5 and 28. So in terms of supply, 
what we have to look at is 40 minus 5 minus 28. Then consider it with the minimum of 32 for the demand there. And the minimum that we get there is a 7. Because if we say 40 minus 5 minus 28, it gives us a 7. And then the minimum of 7 and the 32, it gives us the 7 there. So we have, so we have to allocate 7 units there. And the moment when we allocate 7, that means for the supply constraint, we would have 5 plus 28 plus 7, which gives us a 40. So we can no longer allocate anything in that row. So I would have to cross out for the F2D there. We now move on to the next possible cell. It's now this cell F3 to destination C. And we have to consider the supply the 50, but the demand is a 32, but you have to take note we have already allocated a 7 there. So when you are looking at the demand, what we have to allocate there is a 32 minus 7, and uh, it will give us a 25. So we look at the minimum of uh, the 25, when you are looking at the demand and the supply, you are having a 50. So 50 and 25, the minimum is a 25. We have to allocate 25 in that cell. Then we move on to the last cell, the F3D there, this one here. So we have to look at the supply. There is a 50, and for the demand, it's a 25. But when you are looking at the supply, that row already is a 25. So what we have to allocate there to be 50 minus 25, which gives us a 25. And when you are looking at the demand, the maximum possible that we can allocate there is a 25. So we go on and allocate 25 units there. So when we have uh, finished uh, doing the allocations, we can now go on and uh, interpret what uh, that uh, transportation table is saying. So we have uh, the destination, the allocation, and the cost. What we are saying there is uh, the 30 there on uh, the destination F1 to A, it's indicating that we are allocating 30 units there at a unit cost of 6. If one unit costs $6 to transport and you are transporting 30 of them, the total cost there will be 30 times 6, which gives us 180. For destination F2 to A, we are having 5 units and each unit there costs five dollars to transport so if we're having five five of them it will be five times five to get the cost which is us 25. for destination f2 to b we are saying we are allocating 28 units 28 units at a unit cost of 11 so the cost there will be 28 times 11 which gives us 308. for destination f2 to c we are having there seven units, seven units at a unit cost of nine. So the cost will be seven times nine, which gives us a 63. And for the next one, destination F3 to C, we are having there 25 units, 25 units at a unit cost of seven. So the cost will be 25 times seven, which gives us a 175. And lastly, we are looking at a destination F3 to D. We are allocating 25 units at a unit cost of 18. So the total cost there will be 25 times 18, which gives us 325. Then we have to add those costs, and we get that the cost there is 1,076. So for the initial basic feasible solution, we have those allocations which are appearing in the table, which gives us the total cost of 1,076.